At highway speeds, the average text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. That's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop texts, stop rex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a successful motivational speaker and trusted life coach, Nancy knows how you can live the life you want regardless of the challenges you face. Although she's legally blind, Nancy's mission is to inspire others to overcome obstacles and live life full out. Call in at 800-333-0001 to ask Nancy for advice on topics such as relationships, finances, business, health, and more. Just call 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and today we're going to be talking about guilt. Now, that is a subject that a lot of people may run from, but I'm telling you, run towards it. Because when you can set yourself free from guilty feelings, it could be the fact that you cheated on your diet, maybe. It could be the fact that you did somebody wrong. And you want to make amends to that. It could just be overall that you feel guilty about maybe where you are in your life. When you can face guilt head on and you can express, you know, your part in that and and how things could have been or should be different. That's when you can put a plan of action into place and really make change occur. And that change will set you free. That change will allow you to live your life full out in a big way. Uh, We're also going to be having our inspirational guest coming up in our next segment, Wendy Barnes. Her story is not only emotionally um, compelling, but it's also, you know, educational for all of us in terms of, you know, how we can digest guilt, how we can set ourselves free from that. And listen to our show week live at livingfullout.com forward slash radio show and listen to past shows as well. So there you go. We'll also be taking your callers today. The number for that is 800 333 0001. And so, again, talking about guilt. When you, when you think about guilt, don't think about it as a negative. Think of it as something that you're acknowledging so that you can evolve and become the best version of yourself you can be. So we're going to go to the phone lines now. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hello, welcome Hi. to the show. Hi, thank you for calling. Um, I'm working. Oh, sorry. No, no, yes. <laughs> what, did you have a question? Yes. Uh, yeah, I work. Um, I'm a full-time student and I'm working in a job. I have an internship and I'm going into a very competitive and time-consuming field. Mm-hmm. And I often feel like I have to, um, like, push aside my personal life. What can I do to better balance that with my professional life and everything going on? Is your, What is your professional life? So um, I'm going into the fashion industry and I'm also finishing up school. And so okay. I'm completing an internship while I do that. Okay, okay. So you're just trying to find balance between the internship and developing your career between family, friends, and your own personal time. Yeah. Okay. Well, as as I'm sure fashion is for you, like this radio show and coaching is for me, sometimes when you're in the zone of what you're passionate about in terms of your career, it almost borders the line of career meets hobby, right? You're, you're so invested in it. You love it yeah. that it, it kind of blends those worlds. Well, the best way to balance your personal life with your career life is to let people in. So, for example, people like to share about themselves. People like to talk about themselves. People like to also feel like they're a part of one's journey. So for your side, what you want to do is let as many family and friends into what you're doing. Don't make it a mystery. When you are, you know, slowly but surely getting promoted in your business, let them know every step of the way so that they can each conversation. You really want to focus on them, how you invest in their life. So what's going on with you? You know, how is your relationship? How is your job? Asking really in-depth questions and, and let them answer you back. That's the best way to stay connected because even though you're going to get busy, which you will, the more you invest in your friends and family and that you show you know, pure interest, then you're not going to miss a beat. You're going to stay connected. And that time, even though it's less, will be valuable. Does that make sense? Yeah. And maybe that's something you're already doing. But I just find that in, in in our world of technology today, 
There are so many ways in which we can send someone a quick text saying, I'm thinking of you, um, or an email with, with, you know, I just was remembering the other day about when we were in, you know, when we were back in school or whatever. So, so just take that time with people at the same time, really relish and bask in how great your career, your internship is developing. That's exciting. That's what living full out's about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for calling in and we'll be thinking of you. you All right. Have Have a a great day. day. You too. Bye-bye. You know, the thing about that caller is, you know, it, it is hard. Sometimes we do feel guilty. We feel like we are investing time into our career, into what we need to do, and not with our friends and family. Sometimes we feel guilty because we don't give ourselves enough personal time. And always remember that you are the captain of your own ship. You do have the ability to say yes, to say no, and to put yourself on the path that will truly make you the most successful overall. And uh, we're going to go actually back to the phone lines now. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hello, welcome. Hi, Hi, thank you for calling. How can I help you today? All right. Um, Well, my question for you is that two years ago I moved out. I left my family my friends behind to go to college. And within the first semester of me being there, the anxiety of being away from all of them and it just, added up to a deep depression for me and forced me to move back home. And now I'm trying to get to the point in my life where I want to move out again and I want to go back to being on my own, but how do I cope with knowing I'm leaving them all behind again and I could fall into this depression again? Mm, That's a great question. You know, the thing about life is you have to take chances. You have to take risk. Okay. And, and let me ask you a question. What has changed? What have you learned about yourself today versus the last time you left? Well, I'd have to say that I've, I guess I've become more independent. You know, I've got, I've, in the last few years since I moved back, I had a full-time job the whole time. I was basically living on my own because my parents were gone most of the time. So I was living in a house with just me and my dog. Mm-hmm. So and, I and, feel like and, I'm, oh, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I feel like I'm just kind of a little bit more independent now so that I don't need them. I don't need to think about them every day or something like that, I think. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's, that's growth. That's maturing. And are there new goals for yourself in your life, maybe relationship, career, your own personal development that you like to do? Are, are those different today than they were at that time also? Oh, uh, yes. I've, decided to go to a different path with my career options for, you know, college and study like that. And I've got some new friends where I'm moving to that I've met, you know, over the, over time they moved out there before me and I'm going basically to meet up with them. Mm-hmm. So I feel, I feel like there's a little bit more there for me than there was the first time. So the good thing is you're more independent now, you're more confident, you've, you've, created, you've created a world where before when you moved away you were lonely, you were by yourself, this time you, you've, you've set yourself up to be successful. So from the perspective of you moving out, I say go for it because if you don't, you might regret, you might always wonder and you might feel kind of stuck. On the flip side, with, re- with your family and your friends, they only want the best for you. Would you agree? I mean, they're not looking for you to fail in life, right? Yeah. Right. So knowing that they want the best for you, everybody knows that at some point you have to set someone free. Every parent knows that you can't hold on too tight. You got to let them go. Even friends, you know, when, when I've had friends move away and I could have said, oh gosh, I don't want you to go, but that would have soured their experience right? My making them feel bad would have taken away from their excitement of their new journey. So trust me when I say that they're going to be excited for you. And for those that have moments of, gosh, I'm going to miss you. That's good thing. That's great. Because then you know that you have people in your life that you care about. And I was, as I was telling the previous caller, once you move, just make sure to stay invested in those friendships, into those relationships you know, stay in touch with them via text, email, phone, even if you can't see them face to face because you've moved, you want to continue to take time to, uh, you know, uh, 
put those deposits in. You know, in life, in relationships, we take withdrawals and we put in deposits. You constantly want to be depositing into those relationships. How does that sound? Is that something you can do? Yeah, that's that sounds like actually really good advice. And thank you, thank you for the help today. Well, and and most of all, let me tell you one more thing because I get depression and I get loneliness. Most of all, just know that on the scale of life, you have a long life ahead of you. There are so many people that don't even know the powerhouse that they're going to meet in you one day. They haven't met you yet. Some great relationships don't even know you yet. They don't even know it's coming. Your own career, you don't even know it's coming. Only if you step forward in life, only if you take those chances, you take those risks, will you be able to get the rewards. So even though it might seem scary to move, even though there's going to be some times where you might miss your family and friends, you have to ante up in life. You have to take those steps so that you can get the big payoff. Okay? Okay. Okay. Well, listen, have a great day, you read, because they will cheer him on. And, and somebody missing you is a great thing. So we're going to be coming back in our next segment with Wendy Barnes, our inspirational guest. Her story is amazing, so stay tuned for that. Again, this is the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and we'll be right back. What's up? Thinking about you. XOXOXO. Want to snuggle. Dot, dot, dot. JK. Hit me back. You getting these texts? Question mark. We should hang later. I miss you. Holla at your boy. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. Are you at home? Where are you? What are you doing? OMG, you are making me mad. Are you with your ex? You better text me back. I'm waiting outside your house. Relentless, aggressive texting is like sending an angry robot to deliver your message. When does the robot become dangerous? Let us know at that's not cool.com. That's not cool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hi. I can't come to the phone right now because I'm abusing my children. Not just verbally, but physically. I'll get back to you. If only child abuse was this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call Child Help at 1-800-4-A-CHILD or visit childhelp.org. We've helped millions of people help millions of children. All calls are anonymous and confidential. So call 1-800-4-A-CHILD or visit childhelp.org. Child Help. Trust your instincts. Brought to you by Child Help and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. In the world of fairy tales, Sleeping Beauty had three good fairies to protect her. But in our world, protecting the beauty of the forest is the responsibility of everyone. Listen well, all of you. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans and can be prevented. We'll all pitch in. If humans can do it, so can we. Only you can prevent wildfires. Log on to SmokeyBear.com to find out what you can do. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. A professional motivational speaker, Nancy can help you overcome obstacles and start living full out. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I am Nancy Soleri, and today we are talking about guilt, how to... Get over feelings of guilt, how to recognize 
when we are feeling guilty for an action or an event in our life. And now I'd like to introduce our inspirational guest, Wendy Barnes, because her story, like so many of us, sometimes life just unfolds in a way that it's almost like we can't even believe we're in our own life, literally. And sometimes from those experiences, we, we feel extreme guilt. Like, like, how did I get here? I know we've all said that to ourselves. How did I get here? Well, Wendy has said that many times to herself, and we're going to share her story now. So welcome, Wendy Barnes. Thank you. Hi. Would you say, how did I get here? You've said that a couple times back in the oh, day? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. I have. <laughs> well, let's share with our viewer, our listeners here about your story. Now, we, we want to obviously acknowledge that, you know, your growing up was was not the easiest. You know, you were sexually assaulted by, I believe, your stepfather, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, and for that, again, I'm sorry that you went through that. But that did kind of start your need in life for wanting attention, wanting to feel validated, to feel special. And, and then you met Greg, uh, your, your boyfriend in your teenage years. Can you share with us about that, that meeting? Um, so when I first, you know, as, as you already said, it was almost, I was already crying for, um, him. Um, I met him, I was in the ninth grade. Well, it was the summer between the ninth grade and the 10th grade. And I was a lonely girl. I didn't have very many friends. I had a low self-esteem. And so when um, a neighbor friend of mine introduced me to um, Greg at a um, poolside party, um, he looked at me. And for the first time, I felt seen by somebody. And so I was just automatically just taken by him. I mean, yes, it was complete 100% infatuation, but, you know, it was like he looked at me. He said my name, and Mm. I almost instantly, you know, just fell in love with him. And so um, later on, when I started high school, where he went to high school, when he actually remembered me, it just made me feel so special and so loved. And I started dreaming, you know, that day that, you know, this, you know, this would be my happily ever after. This was going to be my husband someday. You know, I started Mm. dreaming about, you know, you know, having kids with him and, you know, just living happily ever after. And well, 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 and on that note, your relationship kind of went pretty quick, pretty aggressively in terms of, that family starting to develop. Yes, it did. So I was 15 and he was 16 when we first met. By the time I was 16, um, I became pregnant with um, his first child, with our first child. And then um, it was, you know, I was still living with my mom. He was still living with his, um, you know, parents at that time. But right after I had um, our first daughter, um, well, our only daughter, uh, when Mm -hmm. I had, you know, Latasha, um, he encouraged me to move out of my mom's house. And it seemed ideal to me, the story that he gave me, you know, this is where we were going to start our life, you know, you know, how are we ever... Oh, where did he want? Where did he want you to move, though? That's the thing that's so interesting. Wanted to leave your mom, the safety of your mom, to go where? <laughs> to a shelter in downtown Seattle. Um, mm-hmm. This was his back in the. This was like late eighties, and back then, if you were under the age of eighteen but you did not live with your parents, you were then emancipated and you could get on welfare. Mm-hmm. And so. He had, you know, this whole scheme. He was like, if you go live in a shelter, you know, with our daughter, you can then get welfare, and then we would have enough money to get an apartment. And then once we have an apartment, then we can both, you know, go out and get jobs and, you know, start our life together. That that sounds great. (laughs) If it had only worked out that way, right? Um, Right. Share with Share with us the day, there was a pivotal day for you. This is really where, in some cases, the nightmare began. Share with us the day that you were at the shelter and 
you know, you, you had needs that you couldn't get. Right. And so, I mean, so you have to realize, you know, I was barely 17 years old at this time. I didn't realize. So when I moved from my mom's house, I took, you know, the diapers and the formula that my mom had always, you know, provided. I had no job. I had no money. So after about a week of being in the shelter where I felt very alone, very scared, um, you know, her diapers and her formula ran out. I literally I did not know that I could go to the shelter staff and ask them for diapers and formula. I did not know. Nobody told me. So, of course, I got a hold of Greg and told him, you know, Latasha's out of diapers and formula. What are we going to do? And he says, well, I have a job for us. You know, we can, you know, I know how we can make some money. Notice he used the word we. <laughs> he goes, mm-hmm. and I said, okay. You know, and, you know, my thoughts are just thinking, you know, okay, well, who's going to watch Latasha while I'm, you know, at work? And he mentioned, he was like, well, you have to love Latasha a whole bunch to do this. And I'm like, mm. My brain went to, I'm thinking, we're going to be picking up garbage on the side of the streets or something, which I'm totally willing to do. I'm totally happy. I'm just trying to figure out who's going to watch Latasha while we're picking up the garbage. And so he said, well, all you have to do is meet me up at this, you know, certain place. And, um, you know, it was a couple blocks away. And so I walked up there and it was um, this old rundown, like, apartment complex complex. you know, where they did their laundry and stuff, so like a laundry house area. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, I met him up there, and I was so happy. You know, you know, you know, I was upset, and I was scared, but I was like, you know, okay, we're going to be able to get Latasha diapers and formula. And he took Latasha from me, and he was like, well, why is her diaper wet? And I'm like, I told you, he's out of, you know, she's out of diapers. And, you know, all of a sudden, he's like, you know, well, you know, if you were a good woman, you know, you wouldn't have her in this situation. And I'm like, what? He goes, all you have to do is walk out on the street. Um, you know, a, a Asian man is going to stop and pick you up. He's going to pay you to have sex with him. You're going to have sex with him right in the car. And then you'll have enough money to buy Latasha diapers and formula. And I just, I froze. I was like, I didn't understand. I mean, I literally could not comprehend this. How on earth hmm. could he be asking me to do this? How on earth could he even think that I could possibly do this? Mm-hmm. But then he was like, well, don't you love her? I'm like, yes, I love my daughter. And he's like, wouldn't you do anything for her? I'm like, yeah. And he was like, well, then this is what you need to do. And so being just scared to death, you know, feeling like I had no other option, no other choice. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's like I had no makeup on. I didn't, my clothes, I was like in sweatpants and a t-shirt. Who on earth would possibly mistake me to be a prostitute? Mm -hmm. But as soon as I walked down on the street, didn't take more than three or four minutes before a car pulled over. And I remember even looking behind me to see if, you know, he was waiting for somebody else, but there was nobody else behind me. And I did what Greg told me to do. And I remember as as a man started climbing on top of me, I remember praying to God, just please, God, don't let this happen. Please don't let this happen to me. You know, make this, you know, stop somehow, some way. And as he sat up there and climbed on top of me, I realized, oh, my God. There is no God. Mm. And as I took, you know, after it was done, he took me back to where, you know, he had picked me up. I handed the Greg to money. You know, Greg, I handed the money to Greg. And then almost immediately, I just started throwing up and throwing up. And I was heaving. And I mean, because I don't even think I had eaten. So there wasn't much coming out. But I just kept just like heaving and heaving. And the only way that I could, it can explain it is, like, I threw up my soul that day. Yeah. It was like and there I, was... Oh, and ahead. Wendy, I, and I, am, I am so sorry. I'm sure everybody listening today can feel that, that pain, can feel that, how scary that was for you. And, you know, unfortunately, how much did you make that day? It was about 25 or $30. Mm-hmm. 
And did the guy, did the gentleman use per- um, how, and we're, we're going to have to go to a commercial break here in a second. But I just, before we go further into your story, you then started to engage into this lifestyle, which we'll get into more in the next break. But for how many years then did you continue to do this with Greg? Um, for about 13 years. For 13 years. For about 13 and- years, he became more and more, um, I mean, he, he became a full-blown pimp. And he ran, you know, a stable of girls. And this became our normal life. Wow. You know, you have to realize he fed us drugs. And so, Mm -hmm. and he controlled everything that we thought about, everything that we did. We obeyed him. Well, let's let's pause there because there's more to your story that we're going to share, and I want to make sure everyone gets it. So uh, we're speaking to Wendy Barnes, and uh, we'll be coming right back with a continuation of her story. And uh, everybody stay with us. We'll be right back. Fairy residents, this is Tooth speaking. I'm sorry, did you say credit? Credit fairy? Perhaps you have the wrong number. Actually, no, I'm not familiar with the credit fairy. And I know all the fairies. We're a tight-knit bunch. Why don't you tell me more about what the credit fairy does? Maybe it'll ring a bell. The credit fairy magically raises your credit score so you'll be more likely to receive better interest rates? (laughs) I'm pretty sure there's not a credit fairy. But I do know you can improve your credit rating by paying bills on time and keeping your credit card balances low. Glad I could help. Me? Well, I leave money under children's pillows. Adults? No, kids only. But I do know a good dentist. There's no magic to improving your credit, but there is help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the Consumer Bankers Foundation, the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights Education Fund, and the Ad Council. I want to change some things. I want the moms where I live to have childcare they can trust. I want to make sure my little brother and his friends have a safe place to play. I want to help more kids graduate from high school. Help more hardworking families learn how to budget and save. I want more of my neighbors to have access to health care. Want to make a difference? There are so many ways you can. Help create opportunities for everyone in your community. I want to change what I see around here. United Way is creating real, lasting change where you live by focusing on the building blocks of a better life, education, income, and health. I mean, I just want to see more smiles on my sidewalks. Reach out a hand to one and influence the condition of all. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. For more, visit United Way at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a trusted life coach, Nancy will help you overcome setbacks and embrace all life has to offer. Call in with questions live at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. Today, we are talking about guilt, and we're in an interview right now with our inspirational guest, Wendy Barnes, and I'd like to welcome Wendy back to the show. Uh, She uh, spent 13 years uh, in a prostitution, sex trafficking, I don't know if you want to call it a ring, it could have been that, uh, with her her boyfriend at the time, Greg. And, And so, Wendy, I want to kind of pick up there, because talk about guilt, here you are, you know, making money by having sex with men. And then I, I completely understand and can picture just how you felt internally, how much that was eating at you. How did you kind of square that circle? How did you help yourself by from feeling guilty? Well, I think most of my guilt was, you know, the thing is, I mean, as far as going out and 
working the streets and having sex with men, Greg made us believe that that was, that meant we, we were good people. So it wasn't as much that as much as, because after I had my first daughter, a few years later, I had um, a little boy with him. And so it was mostly how I was raised. You know, my kids were seeing this and living this. Um, you know, they watched their dad, you know, um, you know, beat you know, me and the other girls that he had under his control. And so there was always guilt about, you know, my children, you know, living that way. And just Mm -hmm. why can't I ever, you know, get out of that life? Mm -hmm. And, And there was a day that finally came where the police were on to Greg. They were on to what he was doing. Can you share with us about that epic day? Because that really... It was the turning point for you from getting out of the cycle that you were in. Right. And so there came a day, and by this time I was 29 years old, and I had um, had just had another child with him. My third child was only um, 19 days old. And we were living in, we were renting a house at this time. And I remember I was, it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I knew my I knew Latasha and my son Gregory were going to be home from school soon. And so I was sitting there making some macaroni and cheese, and I looked out the kitchen window, and the entire SWAT team was running towards the house. They all had their masks on, and and you have to realize that we had been trained. We had been beaten and trained to always protect Greg, no matter what. You get him out the door. You... You know, you stand in the way, you make sure to protect Greg. You know, don't ever let the police get to him. And I just remember, I remember I looked out the window and I caught the eyes of a person, you know, one of the officers. I could see his eyes and I hadn't looked at somebody's eyes in so long. And he signaled me to open the door. And so I went over, I opened the door and I was like, Greg, the police are here for you. They came in, they took him down, um, they got brought, took him out of the house immediately. And I thought for a minute, is this my freedom? Could they really be rescuing us? I wonder if they have enough evidence against him. Will they really be able to put him away? Or is this just they're going to take him down, ask him a few questions, and he's going to get out of it? And so but there was this glimmer of hope that maybe this was over. But all of a sudden, the police were like, well, we need to take you down um, to the police station also. And so they put me in handcuffs. They took me down to the police station. They put me in this little room, and two male police officers came in. And you have to realize, we're not allowed to talk to normal people. We're not allowed to talk to the police. These are things that will get us a beating. And Mm -hmm. so I was too afraid to talk to them. So when they started asking me the questions, I did what Greg had always told me to do, and that was put my eyes to the ground and don't say a word. Um, I remember at one point they asked me, do I want an attorney? And I said, yes, I want an attorney. For some reason, I thought an attorney was female. I was thinking that I could tell this girl, I could tell this woman, and the woman could tell them everything. But the thing is, is that they took that as a sign of I wasn't going to talk, And so all of a sudden they started saying, well, you're being charged with everything that he's being charged with. Um, I sat in jail for five months just wondering what's going on, what's going to happen. Some days my attorney would call me and say, well, they understand what's going on. You're probably only going to get probation. Other times they would call and say, no, you're probably going to be doing 10 years. You are 29 years old. You knew that Greg also was pimping out 14-year-old girls. You allowed these girls into your home. You guys all turned tricks together. You drove them. You're just as guilty as him. Well, after the five months, I finally went to court, and I took a plea bargain for two years in prison. And it was like I was scared to death because it was like, oh, my God, that's where they take all the bad people. I was well, so frightened. Oh, go ahead. Well, and 
Well, and I was going to say, I mean, I, I can imagine because now, you know, you're going to prison and you were already in a emotional prison. Now you're literally going to a prison prison. And mm-hmm. so, you know, for, for all of us who have never been to prison, what is that experience like? Um, well, you mean the overall prison? <laughs> yeah, like when, well, like, no, like, I mean, just essentially when you got there, you were scared. Was it as scary as you thought it was going to be? Um, no, you know, after time, I mean, at first, yes, I was beyond scared. Um, you know, I, you know, I'd have only seen prison movies where, you know, girls beat up other girls and, you know, girls are going to rape you. And so I was just, I was so fearful. And so within the first, you know, like two hours after us getting there though, because another girl that had been with us for over five years had also been sentenced. And this was the first time that we got to see each other. So when they called yard, um, I remember, you know, trying to find, you know, I don't even know where to go, but I'm following all the people, you know, all the other women. And we go out into this big area where they have, you know, a basketball court and, you know, it's outside. There's a big grassy area. And so I see the other girl and I walk over to her and she's sitting in the grass and I sat there, you know, I went up to her and I started to sit down with her. And all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and the barbed wire all the way around us on top of the, you know, chain leak fences. I remember the blue sky, and the, there was a few clouds in the sky. And, and all of a sudden, we started feeling this weird feeling. And we both knew. We started smiling and kind of giggling at each other. And I was like, what on earth are we smiling about? What on earth could we possibly be happy about? And all of a sudden, we looked at each other, and at the same exact time, we said, oh, my God, we're free. This is what freedom is. Because Mm. Greg had been sentenced to 10 years in prison, we knew that we had 10 years. We had 10 years to get our life together. We had 10 years to build our life up enough to where we could escape him for good. Mm -hmm. And so... The entire prison situation actually was just a huge blessing to me. I mean, I'm so thankful that I went to prison. The women that I met in there are wonderful human beings. I mean, they're just people just like you and me, just like you and me and all the other bad choices, bad situations where they don't have an option sometimes, you know, and so... Um, yeah, so prison was a real blessing, and it's well, nothing and I, and like you see in the movies. <laughs> nothing like you see in the movies. And, and I'm just curious because, you know, here you are, you were, you know, in, in that prostitution ring for 13 years. You went to prison for two years. How did you, again, how did you digest the guilt or the feelings of frustration that you had for so much time that was lost? I mean, out of it came three beautiful children, but so much time that was lost, so many dreams that you may have had for yourself. Where did you, where did you package away that anger, that frustration? What was that like? I think, honestly, I turned that into, I realized there was nothing that I can do to change the past. There's nothing I can do to make up for it. But what I can do is change the future. What I can do. And so that's where I really, you know, it's like, You know, I realize the guilt and the shame. There's Mm -hmm. no reason to stay in that. Um, It doesn't serve you in the future, right? Correct. Yeah. And so it's like, what do I have control over? And that was my future. And so at that time I started, there was actually a class. There was a drug and alcohol treatment class that I was in. And Mm -hmm. the assignment was for all of us to write down everything good about us. Mm -hmm. And I sat there looking at my blank piece of paper, you know, thinking about, well, I'm Greg's hoe. Well, I'm a bad mother. There's nothing good about me. And I remember this one girl as we were going around sharing and everybody else had something good to share about themselves. And when it came to me, I was like, there's nothing good about me or my life. And all of a sudden, one of the girls popped up and she goes, Wendy, Look at your paper. 
And I was like, yeah, it's blank. And she said, yeah, you can now create whatever you want to be. You start mm. writing what you want to be, and then you become it. Mm. And at that point, that's what I put, I just put all of my energy. It was like, I, the biggest dream that I had, I wanted to be normal. <laughs> you know, mm. I wanted to. To get up, I saw all these people that would get up and they go to work and they come home and they eat dinner and they go to bed and they get back up and go to work. And occasionally on the weekends, they have enough money to go to the movies or something. I was yeah. so envious of those people. And but now, but now, but now you've reached that life, that normal life, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, when I could talk to you for hours, but we're coming to a close here. I, I just want to thank you so much for being on the show, and um, we've just enjoyed having you and sharing your story. So, everybody, definitely listen to her story again. Lots of great lessons learned there. And thank you, Wendy, for coming on. I appreciate it. Oh, you are most welcome, and thank you for having me. You guys all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Wendy. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. And ev- bye-bye. Oh. And everybody will be coming right back after this break, taking more of your calls. We'll be back. Hey, Dad. Yeah. You remember that ball game we went to a couple years ago? Sure. And how you didn't have enough cash for two hot dogs, so you walked with me on your shoulders until we found an ATM? And then when we got back to our seats, we never saw the hot dog guy again. Well, I don't remember all that. Yeah, that was an awesome game. You never know which moments will be the ones they'll remember forever. So take time to be a dad today. Learn more at 1-877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Medical mistakes claim tens of thousands of lives every year. The healthcare community is working on it, but you can help. When you communicate with your doctor, when you ask more questions, you reduce your risk of suffering a medical mistake. Doctors can't answer if you don't ask. Help reduce your risk. Questions are the answer. Learn the 10 questions you must ask. Visit www.ahrq.gov. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the Ad Council. I'm getting a catcher's mitt. I'm getting ice skates. I'm getting a devastating flood. Adults are generous. We're even giving kids global warming. But we can still reduce greenhouse gas pollution. Go to fightglobalwarming.com. Brought to you by Environmental Defense, the Robertson Foundation, and the Ad Council. There are many sounds in your daily life. Ones that make you smile. (laughs) Ones that help you relax. And there are some sounds that can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts. Now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you critical information about emergencies in your area. With updates from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know wherever you are. Learn more at ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. The odds of this Alaskan-born pitcher being selected to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game six times? One in 48 million. The odds of this fastballing philanthropist winning the World Series three times, one in three million. The odds of this man having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Hi, I'm Kurt Schilling. Learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. To live full out in your life is about taking control. And when you experience moments of guilt where you feel ashamed, you want to take that control back. You want to acknowledge what it is that you went through, perhaps what you did wrong, mistakes, but more so the lessons that you learned. When you can digest all that, you can then set yourself free to live full out. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. All right, here we are in the last segment of the show. Can't believe it. So, again, we're talking about guilt today. And 
everybody's going to have their own level of where they felt guilty in their life. I, I know for me, there's been, you know, various times I try to live a pretty positive, upbeat life. But what I've learned is that even if it's something as small as being on a diet and eating something unhealthy, let's just take that. Integrity is where you want to be in your life. When you say you're going to do something, you want to do it. When you know that you've done something that's out of step, out of balance in your life, that it's you know, going off road, not on the, the lane that you want to be on to take you to success. That's when you want to release that guilt. If you hold on to it, it controls you. It owns you. It smothers you. But when you tell that guilt, listen, I get it. I made a mistake. And, and you own up to that mistake. That's when you can move forward. That's when you can move past that moment. But it is important to acknowledge perhaps what you did wrong, the mistake you made, because to acknowledge that is a part of having integrity for yourself. It is part of being able to mature and allow ourselves to not let that guilt control us. I get coaching clients all the time that come to me because they've, they've seen their life flash before their eyes. They, they made wrong decisions. They made bad decisions. Even Wendy acknowledged that our, our inspirational guest in the last, in the last couple segments, you know, she lost 13 plus years of her life by allowing herself to get sucked into a prostitution ring. Talk about the guilt that may have haunted her for all those years, but Towards the end of the interview, she really shined. She she set herself free. She did that. She did that by her own mindset, making the decision that I'm not going to let it control me. So can everybody kind of really take that in as we kind of wrap up today's show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to the phone lines. Welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hello. Hello. Mom. Welcome. Hi. Thank, thank you, you for calling. Thank you. My name is Saki Chaudhary, and I have this question uh -huh. you. Uh, basically, I've been, there was an accidental finding in my CT scan of lung of some voids in the lungs. And my doctors are recommending that I go through a lung biopsy operation. And I'm very scared of doing that. Uh, and I just want some advice on how to overcome my fear. You know what, Socket, I... I understand you completely. I do. Because believe it or not, I actually went to the doctor not too long ago, and they're monitoring a dark spot on one of my lungs. And it is scary. It is scary. When we know that there may be something wrong with us and we don't know what that looks like, I think our, 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 our head goes to the place of cancer. Our head goes to the worst place possible. But it, it, is, it isn't always the fact that that is the case. And... If we don't take that test, if we don't see those doctors and, and get checked out, then we allow that fear to control us. We kind of mm -hmm. stay trapped in that place of we're paralyzed, right? We don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And there's probably, I'm just taking a guess here, there's probably a lot of people in your life that want you around for a long time. Would you say yes to that? Yes. Yes. So when we are loved by many when we're and when we have responsibilities and commitments it's our responsibility to do those tests and in, and if that translates to a need for a surgery or any treatments you know life is a gift remember that one day your parents gave they gave birth to you and you were a miracle and you went on to have great relationships a career and and all the life experiences so the miracle of you has a lot more to experience. That journey is not over yet, but this is just one bump in the road. This is the health bump. Um, and trust me again, I'm, I'm legally blind. So I've been given diagnosis right and left over my life. But what I've realized in, is that if you, if you don't, if you don't get tested, if you don't get the treatments, do the surgery, you're kind of checking yourself out of the life game. Hmm. That's but what you advice. want, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. And, and the biggest thing is whether the news is good or not so good. I'm proud of you for, for calling in. I'm proud of you for, for being so fearless, being so courageous to go do that. And then the, the, the aftermath, the, the beauty of it all 
is that you're doing this not just for yourself, but all those that depend on you. Thank you so much. So, well, you're very welcome. And, and, you know, keep us updated. Let us know how it goes. But um, I'll be thinking of you and sending some good prayers your way, okay? Will do. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. You know, it's, it's interesting. Guilt is not just the wrongs of life, the mistakes of life. But sometimes guilt can can be an emotion surrounded by fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the what ifs. And when you stay in that place, nothing healthy can grow there. It's a toxic land. You know, you can't mature, you can't evolve, you can't laugh, you can't experience when you're trapping yourself in that toxic place. So while today we're talking about guilt, And guilt is just one way in which people allow themselves to be trapped in that toxic place. Guilt is just one word, but we can also look at fear, abandonment, you know, being ashamed, feeling alone. For everybody listening today, remember what I told the last caller, your life is a miracle. The fact that you are here today, don't take that lightly. Nothing in life happens by accident. Right where you are today, listening to this radio show, the people you're with, the bills you have to pay, the job you have to go to later today, whatever that may look like, the responsibilities that you have, those are all set out for you. They're they're your life challenges, but they're going to come with rewards. Because every time we conquer a challenge, we get the payoff of, oh, right, I figured that out. Every time we go to a scary doctor appointment, And it comes back with better news than we had thought. What a relief. And then when we get those paychecks for the long days we work, what a great feeling. So the thing is, in order to get to the place of those positive feelings, you have to sometimes go through the fire. You have to go through the trenches. You have to claw your way to that place. Now, it's interesting I use the word claw because I don't want life to sound like it's doomsday. Life is exciting. You just have to keep your eye on the ball, literally. The thing is, is when we feel guilty, it will always pull us downward. It will always lower you to a place that is not allowing you to be your highest and best self. And to, to what you have to always remember is the value of you. So just like I said, your life is a miracle. Remember the value of who you are. Wendy, our inspirational guest, she illustrated that so well in her story about when she was with that group at the drug addiction um, support group, and she didn't write anything down. Her value meter was so low that she didn't feel as if she could offer anything. But we all know that's not true. We all heard her story, and she was courageous and amazing and a fighter and a survivor, and I could go on. I probably could have filled her page for her. But somebody else is most likely going to say that same thing about you. You might be sitting here today wondering, well, what's so special about me? Or, you know, I got that job interview on Monday and there's 10 other candidates. Why should they choose me? Or I don't have somebody in my life that loves me, that that intimate relationship. You know, who's going to choose me? Well, a lot of people. But you have to let that internal light you gotta, you gotta, so it's almost like a pilot light. You gotta turn it up because you gotta turn up your light inside. If you can turn up and set that free, let's not let that stay with you. Again, if it's something like, like not holding to your diet, not going to the gym like you wanted to, if it's your need to forgive or make amends with a friendship, if you feel like you're behind on your homework, if you haven't job searched enough, whatever it is that's making you feel out of integrity, you know, uh, disconnected with your, your mind, your heart, and your soul. Let's get that back on track today. You are the one who can do that. If you do that, I promise you, and you can even write me and tell me how it changed your life. You will feel better. You'll feel lighter. It's not to say that everything's going to fall in place immediately, but you are living your life full out and you're letting life wash over you, but you're not letting it control you. So everybody, thank you so much for listening to today's show. We build these shows for you. So we'd love to hear what topics would you like us to cover? Go ahead and email us at connect at livingfullout.com and share with us your thoughts on today's show and future shows. Also, 
Just like Wendy Barnes, if you have a story to share, if 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 you've experienced a, a life that you feel has lessons that others could benefit from, share with us your story. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. All of the shows, including the replay of this show, will also be on our website at livingfullout.com forward slash radio show. So feel free to check that out. And you can connect with us on all the social media sites as well, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it. But the biggest thing is, is we're here for you each week. I'd like to thank everybody here at the studio. We have Mindy and Travis and Maya and Rich and the rest of the team that puts the show together. So here's to you truly living your life full out, guilt-free, turn that new page. Remember, life your life is like a story, and it's being written one chapter at a time. But you get to start the new chapter. So if today's the day that a new chapter get, gets written, let's do it. Here's you living full out. Everybody have a great day.